Welcome back to FM Live. My name is Mike Ussery, and today we are going to be talking about master cylinder braces. So these are a brace that we sell. So this is kind of a product feature. Um, I'll talk about all kinds of things about this brace, and I'll answer several questions that we have about the brace as we go through the video. But if I don't cover something, or if there are any other related questions that you'd like to ask, drop those down in the comments below, and we will cover those towards the end of the video. So master cylinder brace, what am I talking about? I'm talking about a brace that we have, this guy, that actually goes on the car to brace the brake master cylinder. And I'll show you in just a second why that is more important to have that in place because um, this prevents movement. That's what a brace does, is it prevents movement or um, adds chassis rigidity. In this case, we're preventing movement of the brake master cylinder. And this little guy, it's a very simple piece that looks kind of goofy, but essentially all it is is a mount, this black portion bolts to the car. And then this zinc coated piece right here with this little swivelly wobbly bit braces up against the end of the master cylinder to keep it from being able to flex and move around whenever you hit the brake pedal. So why might somebody need a master cylinder brace? Master cylinder braces are there for when you press the brake pedal hard because what happens is the firewall will actually flex and deform and without this piece the end of your master cylinder is actually going to move a little bit with well the whole master cylinder and your booster and everything else is moving with the firewall because you're flexing the firewall if you are pressing your brake pedal hard like you would on the track. So this is something that keeps that master cylinder in place which then makes your pedal feel much more linear. And instead of transferring some of that effort of pressing the pedal and flexing the firewall, it transfers all of that effort that you're pressing on the brake pedal into braking um, action, or it's using, utilizing that effort for actually stopping the car rather than deforming sheet metal in the car, which is not a good thing anyway. So this, what this brace is for is for improving your brake pedal feel and the effectiveness of what your foot is doing pressing the brake pedal. Um, I should mention that this is an NA and NB part, so not for NCs and NDs, unfortunately. Um, for what it's worth, NCs and NDs are stiffer chassis in general, so they don't usually have quite the same levels of uh, flexi noodliness that the NAs and NBs do, so they don't require this quite as much as the NAs and NBs do. But this is a first and second generation thing. Um, this is left hand drive only. Um, we don't have a right hand drive version of these. And the reason is because we live in North America and we don't have left hand drive Miatas or MX-5s. Um, if you really, really want us to come out with one of these, you'll have to drop off your car and let us borrow it for a month or two as we develop a new one for your left hand drive. No, right hand drive. Miata, MX-5. So confusing. Uh, but no, we, these are left-hand drive only at the moment. Um, <clears throat> there are a few other things that will affect fitment in these cars. And before I go down the list, because it's kind of a long list, let's stop here and we'll take a look at what this looks like in the car as it should be installed. So come over here. And this is kind of a full engine bay. So hopefully you can make out what's going on here. But you can see we've got the brace installed. And there it is with this adjustable foot, or swivel foot, braced up against the nose of that master cylinder. So this is attached by one of the shock tower bolt studs, or shock tower mount studs, I guess, here. And then there's another bolt that's included that bolts into the actual um, chassis or the tub right here. So these two points are holding it on the chassis and then it's holding that master cylinder in place so that way it can't be pushed forward whenever the firewall is being flexed by you pushing on the, the brake pedal really hard. So this is what it looks like in a nutshell. Um, there are of course lots of other parts and pieces of which we will talk about in a second for different fitment that you may or may not be able to use this brace on your Miata. 
but to show you what it looks like whenever you press the brakes and you don't have this brace, let's walk over here to this other car, if you would. And on this one, you can see there is no brace on the front of this one. So when I press down on the brakes really hard, you should be able to see at least a little bit of flex here. Can you see some pretty good flex going on? It may be a little hard to pick up in the video, but you do have to press quite hard to be able to get that master cylinder to actually move where it's easy enough to see on film, but you can get movement out of that guy, um, 16th of an inch, eighth of an inch or something like that, just by mashing on the brakes when you're doing a pretty hard stop or hard braking application out on the track. So you don't want that to happen, hence why we have these guys. So now that we've shown you what it looks like in the car, what the problem is that we're trying to avoid or uh, prevent by installing one of these braces, let's talk about some of the specific fitment because I did mention that obviously this is meant for two generations of Miata. They also have other things that Mazda change that will make fitment of this either difficult or impossible. So let's cover those because there are a few exceptions for sure. Uh, first things first, you need to have enough exposed thread. So as I mentioned, this one, this hole, this mounting hole is that goes over one of the studs that pops up through the chassis for your driver's side front shock mount. So if you have an earlier car, like a 1990 through 93, if you have the original shock mount still, uh, one, you should probably replace those because the rubber in those does break down and deteriorate. So you should probably replace those anyway. But even if you have replacement style uh, 1.6 mounts in the front, the studs are actually shorter than the 1.8 nuts um, studs, excuse me. So if you need or want to install this on your 1.6 Miata, take a look over here at your shock mount and make sure that the amount of stud that's popping up past the nut that's holding on um, to the chassis that you have at least a quarter inch of exposed threads because you'll need about a quarter inch to be able to take that nut off, put this brace in place, and then tighten that nut back on. If you don't have a quarter inch worth of threads there, this brace ain't bitten. So you can do that if you have an earlier card simply by getting a 94 to 97 upper shock mount and that will have the longer threads, fits in the chassis, it's exactly the same otherwise for the early 1.6 guys. So easy thing to do if you don't already. Um, if you have other things that are bolted down, then of course that may be uh, something else you have to look into, but short story, make sure you have enough exposed thread so that way you can sandwich this guy in place. Also, um, another factory fitment thing that you may have to watch out for is that if you have the larger four inch brake booster, and what I'm talking about is that this big black drum looking thing here that's behind your master cylinder. This is the brake booster and it's vacuum assist for your brake system. There are the three inch variants. Basically it's about three inches from the firewall to about where the master cylinder mounts. And I'm rounding a little bit. And this is the normal one that came on most Miatas, but some of the NBs had an option for a four inch thick or basically an even boosted booster and those ones, of course, push the master cylinder too far forward and you won't have room to fit our brace on those cars. So if you have an NB, measure how far your brake booster comes off the firewall and make sure that it's a three inch booster because those will work just fine. Um, if you have an NA with a stock air box, this one does not because we've got our turbo kit on it, but if you've got your air box, which would normally live right about here, your stock air box may have a little bit of interference right at the corner with part of this because it does protrude. You've got a little bit of stud that protrudes back. So you can either trim your air box a little bit or you could potentially trim this bolt down if you needed to, but just be aware if you have a stock NA air box, I know a lot of you are saying like, what? 
my car hasn't had a stock air box in years. It's fine, fair, valid. But if you do, be aware, you may have to do a little bit of a modification to make that fit. Um, another one that we got a lot of questions about is regarding shock tower braces. Will this fit with different shock tower braces? And if you have a factory shock tower brace, the answer is no. And the reason is on the factory shock tower braces, uh, actually, Travis, could you bring your light over here again? The factory shock tower braces, unlike this one, this is an FM shock tower brace, but the factory shock tower braces have a part that comes actually all the way to the outside of the mounting studs. So you actually have all of this hardware showing on the inside of the wall. So there's nowhere for you to put this brace because the factory shock tower brace covers up that stud in that nut. So unfortunately, all of the NANB style or factory kind of shock tower braces won't work because you have to have this stud on the outside wall of your shock tower brace to be able to make it fit. Now, I'm sure there are some other aftermarket braces that would probably work just fine, but essentially, if you can look in your engine bay and you see this stud and the nut on the outside of your brace, you at least got a chance. If it's on the inside of the brace, then sorry, that won't work. Um, specifically, uh, we got a couple questions about the Mazda Speed factory shock tire braces. And it's the same story. Um, they have that hardware on the inside of the, the mounting base of the shock tire brace. It won't work, sorry. Uh, another potential fitment issue is that if you have our Randall Cal intake duct, uh, which is currently not in production, but if you have one of those from back when we did have them, um, that also for NAs specifically does not fit because it takes up the same spot that this does. Uh, NBs are fine because the shape is different, but all the NAs with Randall Cowles, unfortunately, this guy would be right in the way. And another early Miata thing. So if you have specifically a 1990 through at least partway through 91, they did not have the hole in the chassis for this little leg that comes off. Don't really know why Mazda changed it mid-year in 91, and then they started having that. Um, I think it might be an additional bracket that they bolted from the factory there, or at least had an option to. But either way, we're actually using a factory captive nut or, you know, threads that are in the chassis for this lower mounting foot, and it simply isn't there on the 1990 through 91 Miatas. So if you have an early Miata and you want to install this guy, you still can, but you'll need to, one, drill a hole, so that way this foot has a place to land, and then two, you may actually need to use a hammer on the inside of the wheel well, so that way you can move that metal just a little bit because it actually is not only does it have a missing hole and thread, but the shape of the sheet metal below it is not quite the right angle. So, sorry, Mazda changed it on you, but it's a solvable thing if you don't mind a little bit of time uh, with a BFH and uh, a drill to be able to make that work. You will obviously then need a nut to hold it on the back side or in the fender if you wanted to do that. Uh, standard M8 by 1.25, really, really common nut if you do need to go that route. The last factory issue, um, and you'll probably have uh, picked up on that Mazda made lots of little odd changes over the years, and that's absolutely true for the NAs and NBs. But one thing that they did for the NBs that might cause a problem for you is that if you have a washer bottle reservoir, or washer fluid reservoir, I guess you could say, over the top of your exhaust manifold. This is an NB2 thing, or let's see, if you had an NB with ABS, I think they put the washer bottle over the top of the exa exhaust manifold. Um, I'm sure there's people out there that can correct me on that if I'm wrong, but basically if you see that you've got a washer bottle over the top of your exhaust manifold, this guy is likely gonna have a little bit of interference because it is mounting there using a bracket that attaches over to where the shock tower brace or the shock tower mount would normally be. So that will cause a problem. It's a solvable problem if you don't mind cutting or grinding the, the bracket a little bit, but again, be aware if you have a car like that. Um, an easy solution if you have a car like that and you don't wanna deal with the 
uh, the grinding or the cutting at all on that bracket, the stock bracket, is we have a fancy dancy aluminum washer bottle kit that'll move your washer bottle to the wiper cowl. Um, it's not that one, that's the old plastic one. Uh, we actually haven't updated this car to the aluminum one just yet, but we have a fancy dancy one that uh, Travis will link in the comments below after we get done with this video. And that will solve that problem if you have an NB with a washer bottle over the exhaust. Okay. Um, as far as factory stuff is concerned, that kind of covers the gamut for fitment. We have a few other questions that came through that were regarding other non-factory options. So I'm going to cover some of the more common ones that we got from that particular list. And one of them is asking why we haven't made a shock tire brace that just has one of these guys built in. Um, and to answer you honestly, that is an excellent question. Uh, the short answer is that we haven't done it because we've actually had to discontinue the shock tire brace that you see in the car due to all of the recent odd things with manufacturing supply and costs. We are looking at possibly doing another one in the future and maybe we'll have accommodations for a built-in brace at that time. Um, don't quote me, don't hold your breath, but it is possible. So at the moment, we simply don't have that option. It is a good idea though. Uh, if you have a welder and grinder, you could do that yourself though. We'll see if we can come up with something. I, I know that we've already talked about it a little bit before. Uh, another common question is, will this brace work with X master cylinder? Maybe you've got a Willwood master cylinder, or maybe you've got a, uh, um, a Mazda 626 or 929 or, you know, some other master cylinder, or maybe you, you're running a Brembo or, you know, whatever. You've got some other master cylinder that's not a stock Miata master cylinder in the car. Um, I don't know. We haven't tested every master cylinder that's out there, so I can't give you any promises. What I can tell you is that because this guy is adjustable, actually, it'll move around in kind of a... Uh, I don't know, you've got a slot to work with basically. So if you want to place it more precisely in the middle, you have that option. But also because it's a threaded rod that it's stuck to, I can actually move the nuts around to be able to give you some adjustment fore and aft in the car. And when you're dealing with different masters, to give you an idea of what range you may be able to fit is that if you have your master already in the car, bolted up and you measure distance from the firewall, it should be to fit with this guy somewhere in the range of about seven and a half inches to eight and three quarter inches. So if your master sticks out beyond eight and three quarter inches or is shorter than seven and a half inches, then this guy won't work. But because this has this threaded rod, you should be able to fit a master that's in that range. You have about, what is that, uh, inch and a quarter worth of movement that you can adjust for different masters. So that's as good as you're gonna get though. Unfortunately, I haven't tried every single master that's out there on the market, but hopefully that'll give you an idea if this is even close for your particular solution. Um, another good one uh, that was surprisingly common is when are we gonna offer one that fits the Mazda speeds? And this is a twofold question. I already answered part of it earlier is that the Mazda speed shock tower brace it has the, the wall of the, the foot of the brace that covers the stud and the nut, so that's a no-go. The other part of it is that the Mazda Speeds, they already have another purpose for that shock tower brace because it's also part of their um, positive crankcase ventilation or PCV system. So you have actually tubes that are traveling on the side of and underneath the shock tower brace. And if you were to try to do anything to make this fit, you'd likely have to remove the factory shock tire brace to put something else in its place to make that work. And then you'd have to redo the PCV system on top of needing to get a different shock tire brace. Again, it's doable, but you're removing parts and or modifying parts to make other things work. So you'll have to decide if that's worth it to you. I think, oh yeah, I already mentioned the right-hand drive option. <laughs> So if you have one, you want to let us borrow it, let us know. <laughs> uh, I think that unless we've got any other questions and it looks like maybe we do, let's go to those and we'll see if there's anything else that I can blabber on about.
is this something needed for autocross and track use? That's a great question, and we get that one all the time. So I'm glad that that was brought up. It was basically, do we get, or I'm sorry, is this something that is necessary or needed for autocross or track use? Um, in short, this is something that if you are threshold breaking a lot, or even just when you go to the track that you're threshold breaking and you want that threshold breaking to be as effective as possible, then yes, you should absolutely consider a brace. If you're just driving this on the street and you're going on Sunday drives over the mountains or through the canyons or along the coast or whatever, then you're probably not threshold braking. Um, if you've never squealed your tires because you're braking that hard um, on purpose, then you probably would not notice the difference between having this brace and not having this brace. When the firewall flexes and deflects like what I was showing you on the silver car, that happens when you're pushing the brake pedal hard. So, you know, like locking up the brakes or causing lots of tire, tire squeal because your brakes are working that hard to try to stop the car. So if you're tracking it, autocrossing it and threshold braking, probably yes. Um, if you're not using the brakes that hard, you likely won't notice the difference. You won't see the benefit of having a brace there. Do we have any more? Yes. How does it change how the brake pedal feels? So the question is, how does it change what, it, what the brake pedal feels like whenever you press the brake pedal? So um, you can actually try this out yourself. You'd have to have one of these braces and install it to see what the before and after is. But essentially, um, when you're pressing the brake without it and the firewall is flexing, you get to a point where you're putting some really heavy pedal pressure on the brake pedal. That was almost a tongue twister. And you can actually feel that there's kind of like this spongy squishy at the very bottom of the pedal travel. And that's your firewall moving around. It's not your pedal or your hydraulic fluid. Well, assuming that you've bled your brakes and that you don't have really soft spongy rubber lines on the car. But assuming that you don't have something else going on, you can actually feel that firewall flex as you're at the bottom or close to the bottom of the pedal travel. Because at that point, you're applying so much pressure to the hydraulic system that you're actually that lever movement of the pedal pulling, pushing against the firewall is something you can feel with your foot. So it is something, again, that if you're not threshold braking, you probably won't even notice, but if you're applying lots of heavy brake, then yeah, you will notice that down towards the bottom of your pedal travel. What do we got? Anything else? More? Excellent. Would this fit with a brake booster delete? Oh, okay. Um, so this is kind of goes back to the, if I have X brand or other master cylinder installed in the car, but if you're one of those ultimate track rat guys that you've actually removed your brake booster, um, which is totally fine, not knocking it, but if you removed your brake booster, can I still use this brace? And the short answer is not as it sits, because if you remove your brake booster, as I mentioned earlier, Either even the skinny ones that are, you know, normally on NAs and some of the NBs, those are a three inch thick booster. So you take that out of the equation, your master cylinder moves too far away from this to be able to actually have adjustment to reach it. Um, there are, <laughs> there are actually longer versions of this online from some of the big hardware stores like McMaster car and stuff like that. So technically if you wanted to get this and then just replace parts after you get it opened out of the box, you could. But um, it might be better at that point to um, use a slightly different solution. Um, you know, either build your own uh, nose to go on the end of the master cylinder, or possibly, you know, if you're doing that much work to the car anyway, you might even have the fab skills to make your own brace that's similar but more custom to your car. So out of the box, unfortunately, no, this, this won't work for you if you removed your booster from the car. Anything else? One more? Any plans for the ND platform? <laughs> so do we have any plans for the ND or even the NC platform for a master cylinder brace? Um, at the moment, I will admit that we don't have any active plans. It's not something we've noticed being as prevalent of an issue on the early, or I'm sorry, the later cars because they do have a stiffer chassis as a whole. Mazda learned a lot as the car aged because, I don't know, well, hopefully 
for those of you that have driven different generations of cars of the Miata, you can actually notice that there's a substantial difference in just the chassis rigidity that the NAs and NBs, while we all love them and enjoy them, they definitely have a lot more flex than an NC or ND Miata because those chassis are differently designed differently. They don't have quite as much engineering built into them to be just as rigid out of the box as the newer cars do. So um, I will put it on our suggestion list. So thank you for adding that. But at the moment, we don't have any active plans to produce a brace for the NCs and NDs right now. We all covered for the rest of it mostly? Okay. Um, and if we didn't answer your question, because for whatever reason, our comments are a little bit delayed as they come through. Most of these that I'm covering have already been in the queue for like 30 seconds or more before we actually see them. My apologies, but we will answer other questions that I did not get to after this video has been posted. So if there is anything else that we didn't cover um, that I missed or otherwise, feel free to drop us a comment below. You can also give us a ring or you can email us at support at flymiata.com and we'd be happy to answer your questions about master cylinder brakes, uh, braces, or other things, of course, as well. So thank you again for joining. Um, I hope that you learned something. If there's anything else that you'd like to see, if you have any suggestions on other topics that you'd like for us to cover on these FM Live videos, drop those in the comments down below as well. We would love to hear your suggestions and hopefully bring you some more content that you enjoy. But for now, we're going to call that it. So my, um, my thanks for you hanging with us and uh, all of my blathering on and on rambling. But we will see you again next week, same time at our FM Live. We appreciate you. Thanks again. Thank <laughs> you.